I'm Michael Tomakili. I'm Candice Taimo. And I'm Desi Bell. And we are the Microgrid Test Platform Senior Design Team. Now, to start off, traditional power grids are a reliable power source. But microgrids are an emerging solution as the new wave of energy, local energy management in various different industries. They're, they're, they're essentially a scaled down version of the centralized power grid. It can generate, distribute, and control the power in a campus setting as well as a small community. So for our project, we designed a platform that aims to manipulate the voltage and frequency of the diesel generator and allowing it to operate outside of its parameters. By allowing the user to temporarily circumvent these imposed limitations, our platform serves as a valuable tool in the research and development of microgrids. The motivation for this project was to develop a solution that undoubtedly would make energy more sustainable as well as sufficient. In accordance with the IEEE regulation on smart grids, when the system trips, it then de-energizes and enters a lockout. Once it, power, once it is powered back up, it then introduces harmonics as well as reactive power into the grid, which lowers the power quality as well as taking on some power losses. And in that effect, the utility companies have to compensate for these power losses. So just in a nutshell, our project was designed to potentially lower the power, the power costs for both the industry as well as consumers and have a huge impact on the environment. Some of the devices that we use in ex executing our project are as follows. The DSC8620, which is, a, which is an AVR controller. The SEL700GT, which is the governor or generator protection system. And the SEL3530, which is the real-time automation controller. Now, the DSC, the AVR controller, sends biasing signals to the diesel generator that are, so, that are solely dependent on frequency, voltage, and current measurements. The SEL700GT serves as a protection unit and trips once the system is not operating within its range of uh, voltage and frequency. And the real-time automation controller, or RTAC for short, facilitates the communications between these two devices, as well as other devices located in the control unit. Now, for our design theory, I'll pass it on to Candice. Okay, so our overall design operates in two main modes, the first one being normal mode, the second one being test mode. Normal mode operates on a nominal voltage of 120 volts and a frequency of 60 hertz. As far as test mode goes, it is basically a combination of different voltages and frequencies, with over voltage being 137 volts, under voltage 108 volts, over frequency at 66 hertz, and under frequency at 54 hertz. In order to do this, we needed to configure the devices that were mentioned earlier. So the first one being the SEL 700 GT, that is the protection relay. The software we used was the accelerator quickset. And in order to configure this, we first messed with the global settings to be, enable the user to switch between group one and group two. Group one being normal mode, group two being test mode. And this was initiated through a virtual port that the user could control. So the virtual port was not directly connected to the overall device, but it was on a remote computer where they could toggle it on or off. So these parameters were altered with the NC device group numbers, 27 being under voltage, 59 being over voltage, and 81 being frequency. As far as the DSC8620, which um, took, which enabled the biasing signals to be sent to the generator, um, we had to modify it to accept the out-of-bounds outputs from the SEL 700 GT. So this was manipulated with the software Deep Sea Electronics Configuration Suite, and it was manipulated in a similar sense as the SEL 700 GT. So now for the SCL 3530, which is the RTAC, which is basically the whole brain of the entire system, the software we use was the accelerator RTAC. So this takes IEC logic, and we use this to create the virtual port to, for the user to toggle on and off to switch between the test groups. So overall, this whole thing works. The diesel suppose the diesel generator is at operating normal conditions. When the user decides if they want to switch it into test mode, they turn the switch on. The first thing that happens is the SEL 700 GT switches from the op from operating group one to one of the test groups. After this, the augmented bias signals are sent to the diesel generator from the DSC 8620 in order to force the um, out of bounds voltage and frequency. So from this, 
the live data is recorded and exported to a formatted file. If the user wants another test, the SEL switches to that test, and then the whole process is repeated. Once the user decides they no longer want a test, the SEL 700 GT returns to group one for normal operation, and then default biasing returns to the DSC 8620, and the diesel generator is back to normal operations until the user wants to run test mode again. So now, as far as simulation and execution of the project go, we turn to Desi. Uh, we use Python and a GUI framework called TKinter to create a simulator to demonstrate to you how our uh, project work on the actual microgrid. So uh, right now we have it running in normal mode. So you see it's at uh, 60 hertz and 120 volts. If you turn it off and then switch to group two and then select test mode, you can uh, configure one of the uh, listed test here and then uh, enter a desired time that you want to run the test for and then click run selected test. And once it loads up, then the test will run and you'll see the time remaining on the status screen as well as the uh, current voltage and frequency on the status window. And again, there's a live graph showing the uh, values are indeed you know, over voltage and over frequency. So once that finishes running, the, the test results are actually exported to a data file, a .csv data file that can be viewed. And then you can uh, you can either make a, like a graph out of this uh, data, or you can use uh, this data and compare it to data from other tests you've run to try and identify trends or or different uh, limitations of the grid. But currently, our product's functionality is limited to when the diesel generator is operating at idle mode. In the future, the test platform can be expanded to include times when the diesel generator is synchronized with the grid.